So the question is, how good is Julio Tehran? He's in his fifth Major League season. He's been the ace of the Braves since his second season with the Braves. In that time, he's been a two-time All-Star. Uh, at this point, it seems like he's a veteran. Uh, it's his ninth year with the Braves organization. Despite that, though, it's easy to forget he's only 26 years old. Uh, so perception is that he's not an ace. Certain numbers, however, might object to that. He has a career 339 ERA. There's only five pitchers his age or younger with over 200 innings pitched and a better ERA. Those pitchers are Noah Syndergaard, Garrett Cole, Aaron Sanchez, Jacob deGrom, and the late Jose Fernandez. And it's the same ERA that Carlos Martinez has. Here's the list of pitchers on that list that he's better than. Lance McCullers, Michael Waka, Trevor Bauer, Aaron Nola, Vince Velasquez, and Marcus Stroman. Now, it's impossible to scientifically determine if Julio Tehran is an ace or not. Being an ace is wholly a matter of perception. So I'm going to dive into some comparisons to gauge where he stands. So I'm gonna list some guys that in my mind are viewed as uncontroversial aces. Uh, if any of them are not aces in your mind, feel free to let me know. So here's this list. Feel free to pause and look at it. Now I'm going to list guys who are the top pitcher in their staff or might as well be, but are more controversial if you consider them aces. Once again, feel free to pause. So these pitchers I didn't include on the previous list of aces because even though they've shown the same ability to dominate as many of the guys on the other list, they've been stunted more times than not by injuries. They've never shown us a long period of sustained dominance. These pitchers are still effective, if not very good, but I think most people can agree that they've either tapped out on their potential or they've plateaued. They're as good as they're ever going to be, if not slightly past their prime. These pitchers I didn't include on the previous list because they have recently shown us an ability to dominate. We had no indication of that beforehand, so we're currently waiting to see if they can replicate that dominance on a consistent basis. Sonny Gray and Chris Archer I grouped together because they have shown an ability to replicate their dominance over a long period of time, and they haven't been stunted by particular injuries. That said, they haven't been that effective for at least a year now. Uh, so if they were to continue pitching like they were before a year ago, then they would immediately go back up on the list before. Now, as I listed these 34 pitchers, some of them had better statistics than Tehran, some of them didn't. I found it extremely difficult to place Tehran, particularly in any of those categories. I couldn't put him on my perceptive list of aces because his numbers reflect sustained success, but I can't say they reflect sustained dominance. I don't know if Tehran is pitching at his ceiling right now or if he's pitching at his floor. His ceiling seems to be an ace, his floor seems to be a reliable one or two starter, and that's exactly what he's pitched like, and he's put up excellent numbers while doing it. So the more I looked at his statistics, the more I was reminded of this guy, John Lackey. Five years into Tehran's career, his stat line looks remarkably similar to John Lackey's, and it's actually a little better in most areas. He strikes batters out at a higher rate, he walks fewer, he controls contact a little better. Despite these peripherals, sabermetrics have always liked Lackey a lot better. Tehran's biggest critics, especially the computers, have always criticized his fielder independent pitching. Interestingly, at this exact moment, Tehran and Lackey had the exact same career FIP. Think about what John Lackey was for the longest time. Quickly after his rookie season, he became the Angels' number one guy, and that he remained for the rest of his time there, even though he only had one All-Star appearance in 2007. Lackey signed with the Red Sox for a lot of money later, at the time, he wasn't viewed as the number one starter, but that was only because of the presence of John Laster and, at times, Josh Beckett. Still, Lackey remained the same consistent pitcher that he always was. No one ever shook in their boots about facing John Lackey. That still didn't stop him from putting up nine career postseason wins and three World Series rings. That's what you should keep in mind when assessing the type of player that Julio Tehran is. He's not Clayton Kershaw. He's not Noah Syndergaard. He never will be those guys. He's just a remarkably productive player that can take on whatever role the roster requires out of him. So if you need him to be the staff ace, he's proven that he can do that. If you need him to be the fourth guy in the rotation, he's an asset in any context. Statistically, he won't be a Hall of Famer, though sometimes he will be an all-star. He's 26 years old, and that's way ahead of pace in terms of setting career benchmarks. He's never pitched any less than 185 innings in a major league season. He'll consistently have one of the best ERAs in the game. His peripherals will look good, but however, for some reason, his sabermetrics will not reflect that. That's who Tehran will continue to be, and until the Braves can find a true ace that can dominate the way Syndergaard and Bumgarner do, Tehran will remain at the top of the Braves rotation, doing an excellent job remaining in the top 10th percentile of pitchers in baseball.